plenty of damage, but nothing quite measures up to this tree. Take a look at just how big it is. It came crashing down on this house at about 430 this afternoon, all while a family was right inside. From this vantage point, you can actually feel the heat, and now firefighters are fighting this wind to put out this place. Don and Michelle, these are the two men the police say are responsible for stealing these from this Walmart parking lot. That means the scenarios are almost endless, and in the end, everything could end up in a tie. Many of these roads have been left brittle after floodwaters took control of these creeks on ranch roads. At one point during tonight's city council meeting, one council member even suggested to give the job to the winner of a coin flip. It is not uncommon to see students actually cracking open one of these. Scott, we had lots of power outages, but we're over here near the north end near St. Luke's. This is a tree that came down when those high winds came roaring through. You can see some city workers trying to get rid of this to open up the street. Don Michelle, Ethan Windham is housed here at Maximum Security Prison just south of Boise. As we dig deeper into the case, the more disturbing it becomes. And tonight, we're going to look at some of the more gruesome aspects of this case and ask an expert, can a movie really motivate a teen to kill? It is so brutal and so heinous that I believe that a fixed life sentence is appropriate. A judge hands down what she calls the most difficult sentence to give. Life in prison for 17-year-old Ethan Windham. And in justifying it, Judge Sherry Compsey reads disturbing details of Windham's murder of his mother Judy in their Boise Bench home, including his fascination with the movie American Psycho. Police say they found 24 connections to the movie and Ethan's method of murder, beginning with how Ethan dressed to mimic the main character in American Psycho, Patrick Bateman, a serial killer. Bateman wears a suit and carries a briefcase during the movie. Ethan has been wearing suits and carrying a briefcase since the eighth grade. To changing the family's answering machine. Hi, this is Paul. Been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. Police say Ethan would snort his prescription medication to mimic drug use in the movie and had the same morning routine as Bateman. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask which I leave on for 10 minutes. Most of the connections to the movie came from police interviews with Wyndham after the killing, videotaped interrogations that no one but police, prosecutors, and the judge will ever see. Smiling again, shaking his head, he says, no problem at all. That's how easy it was, and he smiles. Oh, thank you, mister, thank you. In the movie, Bateman kills a homeless man, something Wyndham fantasized about. He's the closest person. I was thinking about going downtown and stabbing a couple bums, too. More similarities are everywhere, like Ethan's drawings in his day planner that depicted several naked women being tortured and killed, just like in the movie. I have looked at those pictures. They are extremely disturbing. With all of these links, did a movie compel Ethan Wyndham to kill? It would seem like an easy conclusion to make, especially with the rash of movie copycat killings over the years. Movies like A Clockwork Orange, banned for years in England after leaders linked it to growing real-world violence. The movie Taxi Driver reportedly motivated an assassination attempt on President Reagan by John Hinckley. Slasher films like Child's Play, Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream. Other movies like The Fisher King, American History X, The Matrix, the Basketball Diaries, and Natural Born Killers have all been linked to violent crimes as well. When they ask you who done this, you tell Mickey and Mallory Knox did it, all right? In 1995, Sarah Edmondson and Benjamin Doris went on a shooting spree across Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Louisiana after watching Natural Born Killers. This case spawned a lawsuit against filmmaker Oliver Stone and eventually went to the U.S. Supreme Court where the justices determined it was protected by the First Amendment. We make BSU psychology good. professor Eric Landrum believes it was the right decision. If those movies were that influential, we'd see waves of violence. He says movies tend to influence our perceptions more than our actions, even for impressionable teens. <laughs> Kids will get ideas, but it's a whole new ballgame to change that from what you watched on TV or, or in the movies to changing your own behavior. Which brings us back to the Wyndham case. Detectives asked Ethan Wyndham what role the movie played in his crime. Listen to the judge read what he told them. Then he tells Detective Duggan, most people are weak and stupid, and they're too dumb to create their own way. That's why they use the book movie as an excuse. And perhaps the greatest irony of all, even the teen who mimics so much of American Psycho doesn't believe it caused him to kill.
Now, Wyndham received a life sentence with no chance of parole. Now, we also felt it important to try to talk to Wyndham about this case. We made a request to the Department of Corrections, but their chief psychologist recommended that interview request be denied. Reporting live in Boise, Shane Johnson, today's Channel 6 News. Wind caused a lot of damage all across the valley, including here at our Napa station. If you look at this, this is our old sign that used to be on the front of our building. It was propped up against this wall. The wind got behind it and actually blew it down onto my photographer's car. Now, that is uh, at least 500 pounds. It took a crane to move that off the front of the building, and police say it was even worse on the valley roads. Dirt fills the sky wreaking havoc on Treasure Valley roads. This is the worst I've seen it. A Parma police car smashed around one this afternoon. An officer narrowly escapes. I was standing in the back of my car, noticed when she came over the hill that she didn't see me. Uh, I took about two or three steps backwards and that's when the impact occurred. The driver is taken to the hospital. Her condition at this hour is unknown. Almost simultaneously, the same storm closes part of Highway 45 near Melba. It fluctuates, it goes from, you know, just, you know, Good visibility to, you know, say 300 feet to down to zero in a blink of an eye. This is what it looked like as we made our way to the scene. I can see nothing. I'm following a white line. There's a truck that came out of nowhere. There's a car coming up here. Turn on the flashers. I live up the top of the hill. It's zero visibility coming down through there. They just fresh piled this field over there. That's got sand everywhere. Then you've got the sand pit. They've got a mountain of sand on this side. It's like a Dust bowl. Cars, trucks, even semis collide in this eight car pileup. Then watch what happens. Our video goes on the fritz thanks to dust pounding us and our camera at close to 50 miles an hour. We captured the real carnage using our camera phone. I mean, total zero visibility. And yeah, you know, there's no way you can see what's behind you, in front of you, beside you, or nothing else. Amazingly, the driver of this truck smashed between two semis is okay. Just one of dozens of valley accidents that could have easily turned deadly. Now, police say the best thing to do in situations like we saw today is to slow down, turn on your blinker, and then pull completely off to the side of the road. That way, you won't get hit. Time, weather, and always. Newscaster in every newspaper across the nation has made headlines out of it. And in June 1947, newspaper headlines told the tale of how a Boise man's reported sighting set off an out-of-this-world craze. I kept mulling in my mind, that's the damnedest looking airplane I ever saw. Oregon radio station KWRC sums up the media frenzy that started with an Idaho pilot and raced across the world. The Associated and United Press all over the nation has been after this story. It's the story of Kenneth Arnold, a 32-year-old flying salesman. The man now recognized as starting the flight flying saucer craze. And he changed the world. On June 24, 1947, Arnold was flying from Chehalis, Washington to Boise. As he passed Mount Rainier, he took a break to search for a downed military plane. Searching the rugged terrain, Arnold looked up and saw nine different objects flying in formation. He later described them as flying like saucers skipping across the water. Uh, they seem to flip and flash in the sun just like a mirror, kind of weaving and going at a terrific speed across the face of Mount Rainier. He reported it. And, and of course touched off a firestorm of publicity. That day of the Arnold sighting alone, more than half a dozen people reported seeing objects in the sky, including Idaho's Lieutenant Governor Donald S. Whitehead. The media grabbed onto Arnold because he was said to be a straight shooter, a well-respected man here in the valley, and we couldn't get enough of his description of how the UFOs flew. The news grabbed that and said flying saucers. And for the next three weeks, UFO reports were rampant, including the most famous close encounter on American soil. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The mysterious crash at Roswell. It was the dawn of the flying saucer age. In the movies, spaceships went from rockets to round. And ever since that faithful day, flying saucers have been here to stay. He changed the world and he started the modern era. I wonder if they're aliens. Everyone from kids to pilots have seen things they can't explain. Most don't make headlines, but they are recorded. UFO researchers say that about 80% of those reports can be explained away. But still to this day, despite hundreds of hours of research, 
Kenneth Arnold's case still remains a mystery. It's still unexplained to this day of what he saw and how come they were traveling this fast. It appears to this reporter the flying saucers Kenneth Arnold saw will forever remain a mystery, an unexplained phenomenon, or perhaps a real life sighting of visitors from outer space. Shane Johnson, today's Channel 6 News. Good morning, I'm Shane Johnson and parents are lashing out at changes in the Meridian School District. Will the second day of school be any better? Good morning live. Good morning everyone and welcome to Good Morning Live. Lots going on to talk about this morning. The president will actually address the nation later on this evening and Dave Matthews Band actually hits the concert stage right here in Boise a little later tonight. But first let's talk about the weather, see exactly what we can expect for the rest of today. Let's go over to Kyle in the Precision Forecast Center. Hey Kyle, good morning. Yeah, good morning Shane. Not a bad day. Yes. Now to our top story this morning. New police documents tell the story of a Caldwell husband and wife in a nasty divorce. This morning why the husband says he pulled out a gun and shot his wife dead in her minivan. The suspect, Chris Stone, appeared in an Ada County courtroom Monday. He was originally booked into the Ada County Jail because he had to be treated at St. Al's for a stab wound. He's now behind bars in Canyon County. Tina Jensen has the very latest. Stone is said to appear in court today in Canyon County to be formally charged with second degree murder. An explosion at the Student Union building at Boise State. Firefighters say a butane can went up in flames in a warming station in the kitchen around 7 o'clock last night. They say the can leaked and then filled with gas, setting off the explosion that blew off the doors of the stove. One person was hit by debris but suffered only minor injuries. Twin Falls police need your help to find a bank robber. Here's the picture taken in the bank yesterday morning. Police say the robber hit the Bank of America on Shoshone Street around 1030. He didn't show a gun but did demand cash with a note. If you know anything, there's a big reward and you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. Twin Falls also is dealing with some serious cases of vandalism. Over the weekend, vandals hit 17 times, mostly cases of damaged cars and businesses. It'll cost thousands of dollars to clean up. Well, big changes in busing as Meridian kids head back to school and many parents are up in arms over the cuts. The school district cut out more than 1,000 bus stops. So that means hundreds of kids who used to take the bus now either have to walk to school or get rides from their parents. It's making for some big traffic jams in the local school parking lots. Live TV, that's what you get. Love live TV. Love, <laughs> Love the live TV with the big green monster <laughs> yeah. coming right in. And they know the big green walls behind me. It's no secret. No really. secret. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thanks yeah, a lot, Kyle. Got it. Well, right now it is 542 and still ahead on Good Morning Live, the end of America's seven and a half years of combat in Iraq. We'll take a look at how daily life has changed for Iraqis. I mean, it's all about the smiles. I mean, to see those kids' face light up. Yeah, it was a really nice. I was... Friday looking great with that sunshine. Oh, yeah, that, it's going to be nice. That is for sure. Get yeah. those temperatures back up. All right, 527 right now. And coming up next, a wife shot in the head by the man she wanted to divorce. Now, what new court documents tell us about the last seconds of her life? It'll be nice to see that sunshine all day long again instead of this overcast we've been having. Yeah, I agree. Thursday is just going to be the perfect day, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, perfect. Well, thanks, Kyle. 611 right now. And coming up next on this Tuesday morning, another record attempt. And this time, guess what? It's for a good cause. Which one is it, though? <laughs> yeah.